I said I was gonna cry when I saw you. <laughs> I can't believe we're meeting in person. Like I this? Know with the camera. <laughs> I know, right? How are you? I'm good. Yeah. You? Are you nervous? Yeah, I feel zen and ready. Yeah. It's a big day. Right? Erica Como is about to have surgery that she doesn't need to save someone else's life. Today, Erica is donating one of her kidneys to my sister, Jeannie. I'm just feeling really happy. <laughs> really happy. Happy that I can do this for Jeannie. Erica and my sister are former colleagues and friends. But Erica had no idea Jeannie's kidneys were failing until she saw the story about my family's struggle with kidney disease. The first thing I did was text Jeannie and say, oh my God, Jeannie. And I just offered to help and I had to, I had to. Her kindness is remarkable and overwhelming, especially for her family. In all the months of testing before this day, it was made clear there are risks that come with any surgery. But Erica never looked back, and that gave us the gift of looking forward. Hi, Jen. How's it going? Like my brother, Jeannie has polycystic kidney disease. What's your advice as she's about to go in? Happy thoughts. It's going to go well, and uh, you know what? Uh, and it's over before you know it. If I had another kidney to spare, I would give it to her in a heartbeat. <laughs> Erica didn't hesitate either. My brother. <laughs> okay, bye. Erica is fantastic, and I'm blessed. And I think I'm lucky because she was one of a few people that stepped up. And so there's a category of people. They don't see anything else. They don't see fear the same way that a lot of us do. <laughs> As an organ donor, I get that. The need to help my family was way bigger than any fear. Good luck. Thank you, Osama. But how about donors like my sisters, who are not related to the people they're trying to save, but feel compelled to all the same? What drives them? Donors are often called heroes, and they're usually humble ones. They tend to be ordinary people who don't think twice about helping someone whose life is at risk. And in fact, there's science to help us understand why they step up. It's why we're here at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Abigail Marsh is a neuroscientist who studies the science of kindness. The mystery, the sort of, you know, awe-inspiring mystery. She started researching altruism more than 20 years ago after a stranger saved her life on a busy highway. To risk your own safety or life to save a stranger just stuck with me. It was like a puzzle I couldn't solve. Marsh wanted to get into the minds of heroes. Hello, how are you? Nice a lot you. of her work happened here at the MRI lab on campus. And the structures that we care most about in my research, the amygdala. And Marsh focused on the amygdala, the part of the brain that is responsible for emotions like fear and empathy. Her team scanned the brains of dozens of anonymous kidney donors and spoke to hundreds of other altruists. It's not like every story is the same, but the most common story is that there was no process, you know? There was nothing to unpack. It's like, I heard that you could do this and I wanted to do it. Very fast decision. Right. What does that say? Because I think people are all fascinated to understand why does one person step up mm -hmm. when another doesn't? Well, I think the most important trait, and this also interestingly seems to be um, linked to the amygdala, although that research is very early still, is that people who make decisions to help others at a real risk or cost to themselves actually care about other people more. I know that seems like so self-evident, um, but it's, it's really not. Marsh says not only do altruists value other people more, they seem to feel others' fear more strongly too. They respond to another person's fear or also pain in some of our other studies as though it were their own. Right? And they're motivated to do something about that fear or that pain, just as anybody would be motivated to do something about their own fear or pain. Okay. And that's the distinction, because a lot of yes. people can feel empathetic, but not a lot of people actually take the action. Right? Yeah, exactly. Tim Marshall says he had to act. Someone he didn't know all that well was dying, but it hit close to home. Somebody needed help, and I knew I was O blood type. It was a decision that clicked pretty quickly, actually. 
The appeal was for Jeff Hall, a father from his kid's school in Toronto who needed a liver transplant to survive. I pictured him waking up every day and, and thinking, like, I'm, maybe I'm not going to see my kids in six months and I'm going to leave them and they're going to have to grow up without a father. And I can only imagine how scared he was waking up every day with that as a possibility. And knowing how scared that would make me, um, that's, that was one of my big motivators. What do you think is in you that makes you want to step up like that? I don't know. It's, it's, it's funny because I was, it was a thing my kids asked me once. Like my kids understood. They said, yeah, dad, we know that it needs to happen, but why do you have to do it? And I, I don't know. My response to them was, I said, guys, sometimes you have to be the person in life that puts their hand up. Hey, man, how are you? Hey, good. How are good you? to see you. Nice to see you too. How you been? Good. It's good to you. Tim ended up being a great match. Feeling good, ma'am. That's good. You look good. It's been yeah, almost yeah, three years since he donated part of his so liver to Jeff. Every day is a great day and a gift, and there's no problems anymore. <laughs> I mean, there's problems, but, yeah. But you have your life. Yeah. So there's no real problems. How do you feel about what Tim did for you? I'm floored, flattered, mesmerized. Oh, I love this guy. He's my brother. He's my liver brother. Oh, thank you. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah, he's DNA. my liver brother, for sure. He's right in here. <laughs> he is my hero, you know, so I tell him that all the time. Do you? Yeah. So what makes a hero? It may be because some people are hardwired for both greater empathy and compassion, and it comes back to their brains. So this is an average of the amygdala of 19 altruists, the right amygdala, and this uh, average is about 8% bigger than the average of these 20 controls. Marsha's research has found donors have bigger amygdalas, on average 8% larger than most people's. Assuming that there is a pathway within the amygdala that leads you to, when you see somebody who's in distress, be motivated to take action to help them, it seems like when the amygdala is bigger, that decision to help is more likely to happen. So whereas almost everybody feels empathy for people they're close to, what seems to be one of the differences with very altruistic people is that they are, have strong empathic reactions to a whole range of people, including people they've never met. Code blue, second floor. Julia King is a nurse at Vancouver General Hospital. She's never met the people whose lives she saved. I saw someone's public appeal online. I then applied to donate, but you have to be 25 in BC to be an anonymous donor. Julia was too young to be an anonymous organ donor in BC, so she traveled to Ontario, where the minimum age requirement is 18. In 2021, she donated part of her liver. And get this, seven months later, she flew to Toronto again, this time to donate a kidney. You know, there's a lot of people on this planet, but not many do what you do, and, not, and many don't do it twice. So what is it about you that made you want to step up in this way? Again, not once, but twice. I felt like I wanted to give back and I wanted to help someone else. I thought that since I'm healthy and I have two kidneys, that I'd be able to donate and the portion of your liver does grow back. That's it? That's all you, that you just wanted to help? That seems very understated. <laughs> Since becoming an organ donor, Julia volunteers with BC Transplant. I am Julia. I'm a non-directed liver and kidney donor. Liver Today, liver she and a group of donors and recipients are thanking staff at Vancouver General's transplant unit. This is very nice. Thank you. Julia is a double donor. All right, one, two, three. And it's remarkable that she's just grateful she could help. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Thank you. We're kind of ordinary people, that's the thing. <laughs> but you're doing something very extraordinary. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Back where this story started. You're walking. It's the morning after, and the first time Erica and Jeannie see each other since their surgeries. Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm fine. Probably not crying. I am shocked. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know how to thank you, Erica. Oh, I just feel happy. My angel. How are you guys feeling? It's honestly, I don't believe that we're day after. I don't think it's registered yet. The enormity of what you've done. I feel really grateful. I'm grateful. I could do it for you. <laughs> well, we're both grateful for different reasons. <laughs> I just don't know how I could not do it. Like, not everybody's able to, Erica. 
You're special.